Hello YouTubes, this is Grim Weird coming back at you with more Enigmatica 2 Expert Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. As always, we are joined by our lovely avatar, Zombie Steve, this time in dashing hazmat apparel. Um, so, things have been going on. Um, I, I feel like I finished some of the main projects that I was working on and looking forward to. So I'm sort of once again at that point where it's like, okay, now what? Um, so things I did since last episode, um, I think I, uh, yeah, these have got to be new. So I've upgraded to the tier five uh, ore miner and resource miner. Aren't they pretty? So we got those cooking along. Um, and then I wasn't exactly sure what to do because we were a long way away from probably tier six. Um, and a lot of the things that I was looking at took things I couldn't quite do or didn't quite have or needed me to get back into magic which I wasn't quite in the mood for. So I just, as I always do when I sort of feel lost, I just start going through the uh, gates and whatnot. So we're down to only three gates, Draconic Evolution, Mystical Agriculture, and Blood Magic. Um, so that's cool, but I didn't see anything I could immediately do to make serious progress on any of the three without first doing a lot of uh, Thomcraft, Batania, and Astral, um, and Astral Sorcery. But I'm still sort of in a tech mood, so what I did was I went to Industrial Craft, realized that I had skipped ahead and made a number of machines, like I'd made a fluid solid canning machine, a metal former, um, but I had skipped a few things like uh, like the electric furnace, um, and I realized that you know I I could with not too much effort now that I have both advanced machine casings and um, basic casings and all of that auto programmed that I could actually bust through a lot of this and get a lot of um, these unlocked pretty quickly. And so that's what I did. I unlocked the electric jetpack, the MV, the HV, um, the EV, the CF sprayer, um, the electric furnace, these two that I had already made, um, the block cutting machine. Um, I did basically the generator, the geothermal, the solar, the semi-fluid and the kinetic generators, uh, I busted out the induction furnace and thermal centrifuge, the recycler, mass fabricator, pattern storage scanner, replicator, and I already had some iridium so that completed. So there's two sort of reasons to do this. One, I need, um, I need IC2, Industrial Craft 2 uh, fissionables, like a tiny pile of plutonium and things like that to progress on some of the other tech things I'm working on. So I really sort of needed to figure out what was going on with Industrial Craft 2 and their nuclear stuff, the nuclear option there. The reason I've been sort of avoiding it is because in one of my test worlds, and I can't remember if it was uh, Enigmatica 2 non-expert or if it was the expert one, I accidentally picked up a tiny pile of plutonium from a uh, dragon uh, horde and it killed me over and over and over again before I figured out what was going on, that I was getting irradiated, and before I figured out, um, you know, how to not pick this up and, and etc. So that I'm still a little scarred from that. Um, so I've been sort of avoiding going down that pathway until now because now I need things like tiny piles of plutonium for other packs. Um, and then the other thing is, is that um, I occasionally look for inspiration from place from other playthroughs from Enigmatica 2 from people who actually are sort of experts or actual real experts. Um, because again, I'm sort of new to a lot of this stuff. Uh, but you know, people like Direwolf 20 and Iteration Funk and uh, Hypnotized and uh, you know people like that, uh, Mischief of Mice. Um, I, I sort of you know watch some of their videos and. Uh, Definitely some of them are really into this whole UU Matter thing. Um, UU Matter allows you to replicate items, um, so that's apparently a big deal. Um, I haven't really felt that, that it really required it yet, um, but apparently it takes a lot of uh, pre-work and pre-generation to get the UU Matter necessary to do things like run the replicator. Um, so I thought maybe I better get that going um, sooner rather than, it's probably way too late already, but, you know, to try and get some of that out of the way. So I busted through a lot of this, opened a lot of loot chests, um, 
we're not really at a stage anymore where too much exciting stuff comes out of loot chests. Uh, we've pretty much seen, I think, most of the best that the loot chests have to offer. Um, so again, I, did, I got, you know, some, some nice foods um, that I hadn't eaten. And that reminded me that uh, one of the things I hadn't done was cooking for blockheads and that, um, as you can see down here, um, the first orange, the first row of orange hearts um, came really quick. And the first four or five yellow hearts came really quick because I was just tasting one of everything I found and made. Um, but now we're getting to a point where the last two or three hearts have been super slow. And while I don't feel like I need a lot more hearts, um, again, I, I, it's, it's probably a good thing to do. So one of the things I also did was, because another thing, it was one of our gates. So under getting started, there was cooking for blockheads. And I already had cow in a jar. In fact, I already had two of them from loot chests. So I wanted to get those knocked out. Um, so I made a bunch of cooking for blockhead stuff, um, a cooking table, um, an oven with a bunch of, you know, bakeware stuff from Harvest, uh, Pam's Harvest Crest, Quest, um, Harvest Craft. Um, I put all of, a lot of food ingredients from my Emmy system into the kitchen cabinet and the kitchen counter, um, and uh, I upgraded the fridge, the two fridges, one for preservation, one for ice and snow. Um, the whole works. I, I, I did, you know, the full gamut of stuff there. And I have to say it is pretty darn cool in that um, when you open this cooking table, um, it'll show you all the things you could theoretically craft. And many of them, if I mouse over them, I have not eaten yet. So um, I made myself a small selection of things. Um, some veggie strips, some dried soup, you know, just a few things um, to try the next time I'm actually hungry. Uh, so that's cool. Um, the milk in, a, milk in a jar is sort of cool. It just sort of auto fills up like the aqueous accumulator or something like that. It just sort of fills up with milk. And then when you use recipes, if it's part of the multi-block structure, it just, you know, automatically grabs the milk from the jars. So that whole thing is sort of cool, and um, all of these pieces are pretty um, cheap to make. Um, I think the only reason I avoided doing it early in the game was I didn't have terracotta easy at hand, um, and a lot of them take terracotta, and I was focused on turning my clay into things like, you know, smeltery stuff and etc. But definitely on, an, on a future playthrough, if I were to do Enigmatica 2 Expert again, I'd probably get this going a lot sooner in the pack and concentrate a lot faster and earlier on uh, expanding my hearts. Um, so that's going on. And um, I did open up a few other things. Let's see, what else did I do? Um, I opened up some more engineering things, um, some more uh, immersive engineering things. Um, I think that was the main thing, was the uh, industrial craft between the it taking its own power source in EU and the not wanting to get into radiation because I wasn't quite sure what was going on there. Um, I'd sort of been avoiding it. Um, other than the compressor, I haven't really needed a lot of machines from it until now, probably. So that brings us back to um, picking up some tiny piles and getting into tiny piles of plutonium and getting into that stuff. So what I've got going on here is I've made a scuba helmet hazmat suit, hazmat suit leggings, and rubber boots from Industrial Craft 2. Um, the thing that I'm not quite sure about is I tried to figure out what was going on with radiation in this server, and I think at least the version of Enigmatica 2 Expert that I downloaded, uh, I believe radiation is turned off for Nuclear Craft, but is still on for Industrial Craft 2. Um, and when we ever you look at some of these things, like the... Uh, hazmat suit um, you can add nuclear craft radiation shielding to it and you know if I click on this it gives me a recipe but then again if I go to you know radiation um, those shielding recipes aren't showing up in JEI so I'm a little confused as to you know, are they necessary? Are they useful? Um, 
definitely, if I look at, uh, um, oops, if I look at the uses for it, there are recipes to add it to stuff. So you can add heavy radiation um, to things, uh, the radiation shielding, including tons. You can see there's 150 pages here or whatever. Um, including the armor that I'm currently using with just the flux infused. Um, I could in theory add it to that. So here's that. So this is the stuff I'm currently using. I could um, add heavy radiation shielding to it. Um, but it's not clear if the nuclear craft stuff actually does work on the IC2 radiation or if it's even needed or what exactly is going on. So that leads us to today's little plan, which is uh, I've made the IC2 um, suit. From what I understand, I should hopefully be able to pick up tiny piles of plutonium just with this. Um, if not, I've got myself um, four heavy radiation shieldings to add to this. And then the other test we're going to do is to add four heavy radiation shielding to the flux infused stuff to see if that works. So that's the plan for today. So um, I have turned on the beacon to a couple of um, a couple of locations where I uh, have left tiny piles of plutonium in dragon horde chests. So we're gonna go ahead and head on out to one and do some experimentation. Um, I have 60 levels of experience, and I probably am just gonna kill myself anyway, because right at the moment I don't think I need experience for anything, and it comes pretty fast. Um, when you have a mining pick that gives you experience. So I think what I'm going to do is run up here and I'm going to get naked and I'm going to grab the tiny pile and verify that I die. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put on the hazmat suit and pick it up and see if I don't die. And then if I don't, I'm going to add the heavy shielding to my flux infused armor and see if I can pick it up without dying with that. So that's sort of the plan here. This is a long ways away. I did go ahead and uh, I actually had I think 89 levels of um, experience so I went ahead and like generated a bunch of holding for books to put on containers just to blow some of that experience up. Wow, this is a long ways away. It's a good thing we can fly. So when I get there, I'm going to uh, set up a teleportation point. And actually, I think I'll go ahead and set up a spawn point out there. Yeah, I'm going to set up a spawn point a reasonable distance from the uh, horde. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, die and respawn near it and then run over and do our testing. I'll just have to remember to reset my spawn point back at the base when I'm done with all of this little experimentation. This is quite the little hike. Glad I have an angel ring. One thing to come from this is, you know, I've, I've always, I've never been to the end in any game. Um, and so I've been sort of avoiding it, which is probably stupid. I'm sure I could go there and tear it up and get lots of good stuff. Uh, but since I got loot chests that gave me the Dragon Breath, the Chorus Fruit, and the um, uh, Nether Star that I needed, um, I haven't really bothered. And um, what this has taught me, actually using an Angel Ring for the first time, is that I wants it, I needs it. And uh, on, a, on my next playthrough of anything, I will probably be pushing the boundaries to try and get that ASAP, which I'm sure is not news to any other real expert that has actually done that. All right, we're almost there. Sorry for the babbling and the long flight, but I probably should have jump cut this, but I just thought we'd play it straight. Come on out here and see what's going on. I should pick up that uh, wool on my way back. I think I'm running low on wool. All right, so we're gonna set down over here and 
I am going to um, wait until dark, set my spawn point in this village. I'm going to put all of my gear in a couple of crates, and then we're going to run over there naked and pick up a tiny pile of plutonium, because that's the way we roll. So I'll be right back. And we are back. So I have um, put all my stuff in here. I've set my spawn point to this village near our uh, test tiny pile of uh, plutonium. And so actually, let's do this the, the full Monty. Um, we're going to go ahead and take off everything um, just to verify that this is the thing that was killing me and is the problem. I better take off my baubles as well. When I say full Monty, I mean full Monty. All right. We are naked. So now we're going to run out there and uh, see what kind of damage we can do to ourselves. I probably could have been a little closer to this. That's not too far. So from what I understand, if IC2 radiation is on, on this version of what I'm doing, ah, thorn. Um, this is fine when it's in a chest. It's fine when it's in my ME system, but it, uh, radioactivizes me and gives me radiation sickness and kills me dead quick. Tiny pile of plutonium from industrial craft. So let's pick it up and see what happens. Oh yeah. Uh, radiation. Can we put it down? I don't think we can. So if we look at it, radiation is going to last another... Radiation lasts two and a half minutes. And that's plenty to kill me even with the hearts that I had. I died. All right, so my paranoia has been justified regarding that. So now um, we're going to do test number two, which is adjust the unadulterated hazmat ensemble from industrial craft 2 which is the scuba helmet the hazmat suit the hazmat suit leggings and the rubber boots and let's go ahead and eat so that we're plenty full and ready to roar actually this is an excellent time for me to eat a bunch of that new food that i got which one's it in Pull all these down and eat some food real quick. See if we can gain ourselves more hearts. That's not it. That's not it. It's always the last one you check. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this and just try some of it. Lovely. Stock. Okay, that's just an ingredient. Veggie strips. Oh, i got to wait for some health to come off. There we go. See what my nutrition is doing. Intentionally pick some stuff with some low low nutritive value so we can get more stuff eaten. And we're getting close to full health again. Did we lose a heart from dying? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. 
All right, well, whatevs. Let's get on with it. Alrighty, so back we go. Uh, this time with the IC2 hazmat suit on. So it looks like we've got orange stuff here. I wonder if that's specific for radiation. Isn't it usually like a sort of diamond armor blue when you have armor toughness there? Maybe, maybe not. Where's my tombstone? Oh, I guess I don't have one because I didn't have anything on me. Cool. Um, let's uh, remove that death. And let's try this again. So now we're going to pick this up and hopefully be fine. No radiation sickness. Now I've also heard there might be two levels of how bad this gets. Um, one if it's in your general inventory. Um, and then another if it's actually in your hand. So let's actually hold this a bit and see what happens if anything. So we are wielding it. Now we're juggling it back and forth between offhand and main hand, just to be silly. And yeah, I think we're in business. I don't see, I think nuclear craft, when its radiation is turned on, it gives you some sort of little rad meter, or maybe you need, um, maybe you need a, a bobble or gadget to see that. Um, I'm not sure. But anyway, so far so good. I think the hazmat suit's going to work out for us. But now, and it didn't didn't need um, nuclear craft radiation, at least to handle the IC2 stuff. Uh, it didn't it didn't need nuclear craft radiation shielding on top of it. Now it might to handle nuclear craft radiation if nuclear craft radiation was turned on. I don't know. Um, but let's do the next test, which is. Let's pick up the flux-infused armor without radiation shielding and get ourselves dead from that. Now, presumably, it's not going to save me from radiation without radiation shielding. Uh, so, we shall see. Where did I leave my uh, stuff? <laughs> I forgot what building I'm in. I'm in the Jam Guys building. Oh, this is embarrassing. I think it's over here. There it is. I think. Yes. All right, so we are going to take this off. I took one durability hit, but that might have been from jumping or falling or something. I'm not seeing other durability hits from holding the pile. So now let's put our uh, flux-infused good armor back on and run out there, and I assume this will kill me. Definitely should have set up the uh, spawn in the base a little closer, but um, I'm not exactly sure. So I think when this stuff is lying on the ground or outside of a chest, it has a radius of badness on it. Because um, again, I think it, it was unclear because I was um, not at all sure what was going on. I think when I tried to throw it and come back on the uh, on my test run. Um, I uh, finally figured out after three or four deaths what was causing it, probably. And so I grabbed my stuff, and I only had ten hearts, so I had like, you know, seconds to figure out what it was and get it out of my inventory. So I found it, and I threw it, and I still died. And I came back thinking I wouldn't pick it up. I would just 
uh, loot my gravestone, but it was close enough that I picked it up for anyway, sucked it up into my inventory anyway, and it died again. So this time I threw it as I was running, and uh, the third time I came back, I think I still got radiation sickness just being from it lying on the ground nearby. So it was all a bit of craziness. All right, and so radiation, two and a half minutes. Done deal. So we'll put that back, and we will die with honor as the scientists that we are. I may as well get as close as I can to the uh, village. For looting purposes. Oh, this looks like a lovely place to die. Um, so I'm going to sleep real quick. Grimrier died from radiation. Why, well, yes, yes I did. So unmodified um, uh, flux-infused armor does not protect you. Um, so one rumor I did hear... What in the wide, wide world of sports? Where's my gun? Hi, hi, Yada. Uh, but I have heard, uh, when I was Googling this, trying to figure out what was going on, that the IC2 Quantum Armor uh, will protect you from radiation in its unmodified form. Uh, so that's the sort of white stuff that's like the nano suit um, upgrade. So it's possible that that could do it. Uh, so let's go pick up my stuff. And we're going to now put the... Uh, flux infused, uh, the radi heavy radiation shielding, um, and we're all good here. We're going to put the heavy radiation shielding into my flux infused armor and then see if that protects us from the, um, the tiny pile of plutonium. The you know, reason I might doubt that is because this stuff is nuclear craft whereas the uh, tiny pile of plutonium is industrial craft. So I'm not sure if it's the same radiation or what. I can't remember if I bought a, brought a uh, crafting table, but I do have wood, so we'll just do that. All right, so now get this off of me. And let's see what happens here. So the other thing that's sort of weird is it doesn't say anything about it. Um, I don't know. So we'll just see, I guess. It's letting me at it. Uh, but is it now uncharged? It's now uncharged. All right. So that may be a problem. So what we're going to do about that is we are going to break out. Uh, let's do the shovel. We're going to set the uh, brown magic teleportation to right there. And we're going to break out our hammer. And we are going to teleport back to base and charge these bad boy up just in case that matters. Because there's no way, shape, or form that these will ever be uncharged when I'm out running around. So there's no reason to ch test if they will work uncharged. I don't think these have ever, they, they, <laughs> with, with holding four on them, um, they have a 2.4 million RF of a charge. And I don't think even fighting and running around since I put this on, I don't think I've ever gone be below about 2,390,000. So we got charged for days on these bad boys. So we'll take a moment. Um, fortunately, these charge faster than the nano suit and the quantum suit. Um, so we will just spend a few seconds here. 
哒哒哒哒哒哒哒。I could jump cut for this, but I'm not in the mood to stitch things back together today, so bear with me. We'll be done in a moment. So definitely, um, uh, we're going to have to get back into um, magic soon, because I'm reaching that point where we're starting to come together up near the top. So all the tech stuff is interdependent on each other. you got to use industrial crafts for this, for mechanism for that, for thermal engineering that, for industrial foregoing that. you got to like mix and match all that crap and all the components to get all that stuff going. Um, and definitely when you're moving up the magic tree, you got to use Batania and Thaumcraft and Astral Sorcery things all together to keep that moving. But now that we're reaching the top of the gates and the top uh, mods in this pack, now we're starting to see that crossover where you have to use the magic stuff um, in the tech things and have to use the tech things in the magic stuff. It's turning into a whole big thing. So, all right, and we are back. So just for safety, we're going to throw all that in there. We're going to put this on. But I do sort of want to uh, milk the tech thing a bit longer. There's definitely a few more things I want to do. Should have eaten some food first, but uh, shouldn't matter for testing purposes. We're either going to get radiation sickness or not with the nuclear craft heavy shielding installed in our flux infused armor when we pick up the industrial craft two tiny pile and there's your there's your answer so let's we'll head on back and this looks like a good place to die so the nuclear craft um, the nuclear craft heavy plating does not protect me from the IC2 radiation. Important safety tip. And it's not required for the hazmat suit. So now we have our answer. Um, where is my body? Give me back my armor. So I'm under the impression, from what I understand, the nuclear craft radiation system is turned off in the default of this mod pack, at least the version that I picked up. Um, but at least we have that there if we do get into something and nuclear craft isn't as gone as we thought. So there we have our answers. Um, if you're uh, going to play this mod pack, don't pick up tiny piles of plutonium and don't mess around with IC2 radiation without a hazmat suit and don't worry about the uh, nuclear craft stuff because that ain't going to help you okay so let's go get all my stuff I guess there's one last test we could do and that is um, I know the tiny pile is safe when it is in your ME system or I've been told that the tiny pile is safe when it's in your ME system or when it's in a container um, like a box and we can see that it is when we're standing next to that box um, but I'm not sure about if it's in a backpack so let's go ahead and uh, pick all of this stuff up and that'll be sort of a last test is that well, you know what I'm not even gonna bother testing that the bottom line is have the damn hazmat suit on. That is the bottom line. Testing done. So what I'm going to do now, well, well, we'll just go pick it up. It seems wrong to not just go pick it up now that we've uh, gone through all the testing to make sure that we can pick it up safely. So we are going to go pick that up, and we're going to go pick up the other one. I think I've only found two. At least I only marked two on my map. Um, I 
th I think there might have been a third, but I think I forgot to mark it on the map. So I'm not sure where it is, if there is one. Uh, which was not the brightest of me, if that happened. Um, but, you know, whatever. So, um, yes, we're going to go pick up the tiny pile in our hazmat suit. And then go pick up another one, and we're going to get those into our ME system. And then we can start making more of them, because I think I need three of them for some recipe, which is what triggered all of this. There's some recipe I wanted to make in nuclear craft or something. So pick it up. No radiation. Good to go. Uh, I'm going to destroy this so that I don't come back here looking for it again. And I'm going to kill my uh, kill all of these. So remove, remove, remove. Um, so the other tiny pile is uh, a long ways away, but I'm going to go get that bad boy. And then I'll check the runtime on this video. And if we have more time, maybe we'll do a little bit more. Um, so I'll be right back. I'm flying down to the uh, to the other tiny pile, and I did cross into some bamboo forest, and uh, I don't think I've shown amphitheers before, but they're like little flying uh, critters. I think you can tame these guys and use them as a flying mount, like the hippogriff. Uh, I don't think they're hostile, unlike the Stygian birds, um, but they're pretty cool looking. I think they will fight back if you attack them. And they come in a lot of different colors. So those things are pretty cool. And I think they tend to be in jungles or jungle-like biomes. So it's the first time I'm flying over this uh, bamboo forest. And first time I'm seeing them in this playthrough. But I did encounter them uh, in one of my trial worlds when I was running around exploring. Another cool structure. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, go back. Oh, that's the other important thing I wanted to say. So I've noticed that um, I tried to heal up. And uh, I used to have, I'm pretty sure when I started this, I'll have to go back and check the uh, beginning of the episode. But I think I had um, the entire orange bar filled up and most of the yellow bar filled up. I think my yellow bar was at maybe like eight or nine. Um and now I have eaten food and tried to heal up, and I'm down now to only eight or nine on the orange bar. So I believe I lost about ten hearts worth. So that was a costly little experiment we did. I'm still happy we did it, because uh, you got to know these kinds of things. Um, and it's not like when I'm in my normal armor, things have been hurting me much. So I'm not super worried about it. Um, but uh, I'm glad now that I have uh, cooking for blockheads ready to go so I can try and recover some of that. Um, so that's an important safety tip. Um, try not to die a lot if you are leveling up your hearts through eating food. All right, now I'm almost to the other tiny pile. We're going to grab that. Uh, we're going to head back to uh, the base. And it looks like um, the running time is already going a little long, so that will probably be the end of the episode. But thank you for watching along and, uh, and looking at this experiment. Oh, maybe that's why I think I, th I have three. Maybe there are two here. So there's a second one. I hope I'm right, because I think I need three of these for whatever whatever recipe sent me on this tangent. I think I need three tiny piles. Hey, all right, that was, you know, I'm getting old um, and uh, getting senile, but I could have sworn that I had three, three found, uh, but only had two waypoints on my map, and so I was confused. But there we go, we got three of these. Um, and again, no radiation assistance. Um, I've also lost my toughness and my strength buffs that I had permanently from having a really high health. 
Um, so that's sort of a bummer. But whatever. We will live. We can get it back. Um, so what else was I going to do? Um, just check my nutrition. I need to eat some better food. Let's see, I think I have some plowmans or something around. I'll work on that. I think I have some food that covers all five nutrition sources back in the uh, base. Um, so yeah, mission accomplished. Um, well, that's the thing I was going to do. I was going to real quick see if I can remember. Oh, this is what I need. I need a block of plutonium. So getting into plutonium, which is required for a bunch of um, stuff, the I think the only way to make it is to create blocks of it. Um, and each block requires three tiny piles of plutonium um, and mana-infused metal, which we can do, and cobalt, which we can do, and cyanite, which we can do, thanks to our um, little extreme reactor we did that turns um, uranium into cyanite, and an empowered palace crystal block we could do with our empowerer. So the one thing we can't make ourselves of all of this is um, the tiny pile of plutonium. Um, but this will give me enough for one plutonium block, which will give me, I think, the whatever... I forget what, uh, what I wanted that for. Oh, a draconic core to unlock draconic evolution. So I think all the rest of this stuff I can do, except I didn't have a plutonium ingot. So it's, that's, I think, what I was looking for here. Um, yeah, so... That's what we're doing. So mission accomplished. And uh, I think I now have all the machines necessary to make tiny p piles of plutonium myself. I just got to figure out what that looks like. So if we see how to make that, it's in the thermal centrifuge, which I now have one of those. And you put in um, spent fuel rods, which I believe come... Um, let's see. I assume that comes out of... Um, let's see if this... We'll figure it out. Bottom line is, I think I have a fission controller, and I think I can make this stuff. So we will get there. We've gone nuclear. We have a hazmat suit. We don't need nuclear crafts heavy shielding, and we uh, got it all figured out. So uh, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, thank you for coming along, and thank you for watching me die. Don't try this at home, kids. I did lose my strength and my uh, some other buff, um, and I did lose possibly about 10 hearts um, from all that dying. Um, so be safe out there. And uh, until next time, this is Grim Weird and Zombie Steve signing off. Bye.